Yes, our Labour U-turns losing your vote. Give us a call now to speak with us on this 0207 862 2222. It's on loads of the front pages this morning. Keir Starmer has been forced to drop his support for the party's Rochdale by-election candidate. After it, it was reported that Azza Ali made anti-Semitic comments. But hours before that decision, the Labour leaders team had defended the candidate, claiming he'd simply fallen for an online conspiracy theory and the comments were very out of character for him. So, we're, we're going to come to Labour's zigzagging on other policies, but let's talk about Rochdale first. He's still going to stand this guy, so he's still, he's not badged up as Labour anymore, as Ali, but he's still in the by-election, he's in the mix. Certainly is. And Strange. I, well, I happen to think this is television gold, morning TV gold we're making, so on that note, I'll continue. But, <laughs> um, I... Listen, the man's inexcusable. We'll get into exactly what he said about Hamas attacks and the conspiracy and the tin foil hat lot bit of it. But the fact that in a place like Rochdale, does the man not know the history of the place? Does he not understand the racial and sort of uh, religious connotations of what he was getting into? You're the, doing about, uh, as Mr. Ali. Ali, Mr. Yeah. Ali himself. I mean, Rochdale itself is, 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 is a complex place when it comes to race and religion, and he's kind of adding fuel to sort of but very anti-Semitic fires. But he's speaking to a very powerful constituency, which are... British Muslims who are very angry about Gaza. That doesn't mean that you can go around saying that the Hamas oh, no, attacks sure were allowed by Israel. For sure not. Okay, as a Muslim, I disassociate and vehemently talk, you know, so he, counter what his he claims. Said this meeting, he doesn't speak for me or for anyone like me. Remind us what he said, because viewers may not be clear. So it was a combination of things, the main and most egregious of which was him claiming that Israel, quote, and this is his word, allowed the Hamas attacks in order to be able to go into Gaza. I mean, deplorable stuff. The idea that a state would assassinate over a thousand of their own citizens in order to be able to go and assassinate others, it's, it's beyond, it beggars belief. And, and my problem with Labour is, listen, in the next election, my vote is up to grab. Is it? Is it up, to, up for grabs Absolutely. at this moment? Absolutely. So you might go Tory? I am not a Labour voter. Whoever speaks to me is the person that okay. gets my vote. Interesting. Okay, interesting. Reading things like this and seeing someone like Mr Ali and seeing the reticence of the Parliamentary Labour Party to condemn him and to make him to make sure that he doesn't get a seat and allowing him to stand as an independent is, is really, really difficult. How so, so am they, I... The key thing here is about Starmer going forwards and backwards and forwards again. He's pussyfooting, Do you think he is? Yeah, James? I think so. I think what uh, Keir Starmer... Should have just dropped him. Yeah, I think what he's discovering in, in being in, in opposition is that it's very good to oppose what, you know, all, all the policies the Tories make. It's very difficult suddenly when, you, when you're actually in charge or, or will get in charge and find out you haven't got a pot of money and that people are flawed and difficult. It's very easy to point, uh, point fingers when actually got to look closer to home. I think the very fact that he did make a decision to take him away, it was good. I, I, I'm a big hater of council culture and bits and pieces. Now, the guys obviously you know, conspiracy theories. People say that 9-11 happened because uh, the Americans knew about it, but they wanted to do it because they wanted to go into Iraq and Afghanistan, et cetera, et cetera. That, that, you see all these stupid stuff online all the time. I think, fundamentally, you know, benefit of the doubt, look into something and feel that, do you know what, he's a bit of a muppet, but the fact that they discovered that he, he was deplorable, as exactly as Nelifer mm. said, he should have stood down. So I don't mind him, uh, Keir Starmer standing him down. What I find difficult is it's the belief that Labour will fix everything when actually they can't magic up more money, they can't magic up solutions, mm. otherwise people would have done it already. And but most it's, it's people... whether they, they, they... I suppose whether they've got the courage of their convictions or whether they, as soon as they sense a bit of heat, they Yeah, retreat. no real politics has I'll just, to... No. I'll just play this clip. This is the, the National Campaign Coordinator, Pat McFadden, for Labour, who's saying that the, this decision on the candidate in Rochdale doesn't show that Starmer is a U-turner. Keir Starmer has taken the tough but necessary decision today to withdraw support from our candidate in Rochdale. When Keir Starmer became leader of the Labour Party, he said he would change the Labour Party and expect that every candidate and MP would operate to the highest standards. Uh, and although it was a difficult decision, today he's put those words into action and unfortunately we've had to take this difficult decision. All right, so, so he's portraying it as strong leadership. Nelifer. I mean... All right, all right, Pat, if, if that's what you're trying to suggest it is. My concern is, over the last couple of weeks, we've had the Labour leader and his shadow cabinet making lots of assertions about things that they would do and then making the complete opposite promise. Mm. Um, it's, it's sort of like speaking with one side of your mouth and then with the other to different people. And as I say, my vote is up. You can win me, Keir, but you can't win me with candidates like this. With Could coming they up with these... Could their £28 billion green plan? Absolutely not. Massive, it had a massive thump when 
when it hit the floor, that one? Absolutely not. And, and listen, it's, it's, it's should... an own goal. You're giving Rishi Sunak, you're giving whoever becomes the next leader of the Tory party ammunition when you do things like this. It's... Mm. I, I, I question not his leadership or his dedication to the country, but his ability to actually whip up the votes and whip up his MPs. In, in the Tory party, which has obviously merch, one of their things, and we'll show this in a minute, is, is flip-flops with Keir Starmer's face on. Love they're that. actually... They're Very 2024, yeah. that. Sharon is in Lincolnshire. Sharon, are we... Is this worrying you about Labour, that they seem to change things all the time? No, not really. I think it's a good idea if uh, they relook at their policies and decide if they can afford them or not. I'd rather um, they didn't do what the current government does, like with HS2, where they just went ahead with it, went ahead with it. It costs loads of money and there's no benefit, especially not to Lincolnshire. We got nothing out of that scheme. OK, Sharon, thank you very much. We mentioned that the history of, of U-turns that Starmer has allegedly done. So I wonder if we, just, if we just rewind a bit of Keir Starmer's recent past, press the rewind button and just see what we find. And I mentioned flip-flops. Flip-flops are a thing, OK? And at the, the Starmer face, and we've got to ask the question whether these are Starmer's flip-flops. And it's, it's not just the, the green policy, it's not just Mr Ali. Go right back to when he tried to demote Angela Rayner. And there was a, a, a big hoo-ha in his party, and he had to not just reinstate her, but virtually promoted her after that. You've got another one on utilities, train, post, electrics, water. They said they were bringing them into common ownership. What happened there? Basically got cancelled, that policy. Cancelado, that was the end of that. So, so now they just keep them in private hands, but run it a bit better. And if you go... Here's the thing I mentioned. <laughs> Conservative Central Office. Keir Starmer flip-flops, a genuine advert. They're selling them, right? If you go to the website Politico, they have a list, and it's so long, I almost can't fit it all in. Relationship with trade unions, not having a second referendum on Brexit, universal credit, Jeremy Corbyn, view of him, tuition fees, abolishing them, no, we're not going to, taxing top earners more, abolishing or changing the House of Lords big time, they're still at sixes and sevens over that, Taxes on big tech, they've taken those off the table. No rent controls. Again, ULES, child benefit cap to stay. Gender wars, transgender policies. Workers' rights, that's another policy that they've been backwards and forwards on. Then some more for you, Saudi arms. Bankers' bonuses they've decided they can keep. Then the really big one down here, the £28 billion a year to save the planet and it's dropped, and it goes. And do you know what? It, you could spend about an hour on that website, and there's even more going on. But the, the, the green levy was the one that hit all the alarm bells, James. Yeah, but look, it's, it's the, the, the battle between practice and theory. You know, it, it, the theory's fantastic until you've got to put it into practice, you know, and I think, unfortunately, if you ever watched... We were talking about it, yes, minister, or yes, prime minister. It changed, it changed the faces, changed the front of house. It, it always remains the same because there's only a limited amount of money. There's it, only certain things you can do. And the problem is it's very easy to, to talk in hyperbole, promise the world, until you've actually got to put it into place. And well, Liz Trust did a big... Liz Trust said, look, we're going to change everything. We're doing I was going to say, the, the, you know, the, the absolute master of all flip-flops. I don't want to let the Tories get away with uh, with that. I mean, I'd love to see you do an equivalent one, Jeremy, for the flip-flops well, of the Tory party. Well, they've had six prime ministers or yeah, five. Well, Sunak well, was awful. He, he, he I, interviewed the other day. The He's not is, delivered on anything. There's a difference between uh, a vote for Labour and not voting Tory. There's a difference. And Keir Starmer is failing on delivering on what Labour vote means. Yeah, but we're if... not talking about him today. Sorry, we, we, we talk about him every other day, so don't worry, we're not missing him out. Yeah. But, but we are on Labour today, right? That's we're what on... I'm saying. So, to, yeah. it, so if Keir Starmer isn't telling me what a vote for Labour is with all these flip-flops, right. how am I supposed to vote well, for Well, it's him? very interesting it's your vote is up for grabs. Pre... On PMQs every Wednesday, he's there telling us exactly how bad the Tories are. And I hear yeah. him. But what are you offering? Well, let's see. After the break, more calls from you. Are Labour U-turns losing your vote? Is it fair to have those, those flip-flops with Keir Starmer's face on? Or do you think, no, he's just being honest. He can see things, some things can't work, and he just scraps them. 0207 862 See you in a moment. Now, more calls on whether politicians lose your vote if they change their mind. And we're specifically talking about Keir Starmer. So, bottom line, they had a, a candidate in Rochdale. He, he made some ridiculous remarks. They said they were standing by him and now they've decided to drop him. So it's another zigzag. So, Nick in Mansfield, what do you think? Good morning, Jeremy. I, um, I quite fancy a, a, a ice cream now. Um, I know, a honeycomb, <laughs> the old hokey pokey. <laughs> yeah. Right. Firstly, um, um, I will say um, I respect a man who uh, will change his mind with new information. 
um, as Keir has done over this uh, um, gentleman, and I uh, hesitate to use the term, um, who has made horrible, disgusting comments, and frankly, he, he should be out. This is in massive... Co Contrast to to the um, the um, uh, Tories, i.e., Rishi and Boris, who got new information and still doggedly stuck to their 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 views. But when, um, when, when are we ever going to hear a politician who said, you know, remember Mrs. Thatcher saying, "You turn if you want to." Yep. The lady is yep. not for turning. Don't we want a bit of certainty? Damn right. Damn right we do. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, I mean that, that's that's all well and good uh, based on the information you've got at the time. Okay. Uh, Kia, Kia is an honest politician who will change given changed circumstances. Information. Uh huh. Yes. Richie and Boris stuck to um, uh, their their uh, well. Um, basically lies, uh, despite um, information being brought Thanks. forward uh, that their position was, was totally invalid. Thank you, Nick, so much. Well done. Thanks for calling. Jackie in Cardiff, hi. Hello there. So what do you think? Is Keir Starmer a flip-flop merchant or is he just, as, as Nick was saying there, he changes when he has to? Well, I, first of all, getting back to Nick, this gentleman, that, that, that they knew... Keir Starmer knew in October this statement was made. So in October, they knew that the gentleman they were putting forward had made this statement. The reason he had view turned this time, OK, and, he, and let me just say, I've been a Labour voter all my life, as I just said to your researcher, I've voted for every single um, leader since Kinnock, OK, and this one absolutely won't be getting my vote. Well, so Keir, but, you, you didn't vote for Michael Foote, yeah. OK, you but, voted for Corbyn, yep. Uh, yeah, OK, and the reason I started with Kinnock is because that was one of my first years I was 18 and I could vote, OK? Oh, right, voted for Corbyn, voted for every single one of them. Don't However, can I, if I get back to what I was saying... Please, yes, sorry. That, gentle, that gentleman um, made that statement in October. The reason yesterday's U-turn came was because... They know, because I've been following this, even though I live in Cardiff, I've been following this, George Galloway is going to take that seat massively. You think so? Um, he's going to, and I tell That's you something else. You can go online yeah. and you can see that mark that the, the Labour Party out canvassing and the abuse that they're taking as they're canvassing. That doesn't mean for anything. What's got, yes, for what's got, yes, for their, their stance All right. on what's happened in Gaza. I, I so hear you. This All man right. is a compulsive U-turner, and he's, he's done it since day one. The vet, I, I was going to support him. When I first watched the Hustings, because I was a member of the Labour Party, I went out leafleting. Yeah. But you're, it sounds I, just... I'm breaking in only, Jackie, to just, just yeah. interrupt the flow. It, it sounds as if you're really cross with Keir Starmer about Gaza and you think in Rochdale they're getting their just desserts. It's several things, and, and this is going to go across the nation. And I keep hearing all this time, I keep hearing the Muslim vote, the Muslim vote. I'm a white British woman who find it appalling what's happened. However... The first time I ever looked and thought, oh, my God, I found it breathtaking, was I was watching the Hustings to see who I was going to choose to vote for, because I was a member of the Labour Party, yeah, yeah. after Corbyn. I watched him stand on a platform. At the time, he had Jess Phillips, she had a few of the others, and I was open-minded who I was going to go for. He made the statement saying how the um, media had been unfair to Corbyn and how Corbyn was a good man. You can see this, because he was... Yeah, yeah, we know, we heard it, yeah. Yeah, and I thought... Well, actually, yeah, I agree, because I, I was a supporter. I thought, yeah, yeah, I do seem to give him a heart attack, blah, de, blah, de, blah. The right. next thing, yeah. you find he's completely U-turn. OK, all right, all right, hold it there, hold it there. That's a good point. It, it, it actually, and I mentioned that as a U-turn, that he was, he was a supporter of Corbyn, he backed him, he defended him, and now it's not even that he's not in his... He's done, he's done that with Corbyn. Sorry, mate, you're, 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 I'll do that again. So... It's like, it's like that, he's gone. He's not even going to stand. No. I, I mean, I, that's proper... Is that, that's a U-turn, isn't it? It is, but it's also... Or is it the, just politics? The politicking here is quite, is quite obvious. And I don't think... Um, sorry, I think I lost the thread there a no, little bit. I did too, to be, yeah, to be so, honest. So I, I want to be honest with you and say, I'm not a Labour voter. It's not where I, I traditionally align, Jackie. But the way that this has been done, the politicking that's going on, I think we can all smell it, right? Mm. We, all, we all get but a sense of something That's the reality else. of life. Maybe that's James that we're being unfair here, that politics is all but about... But he's losing the votes, isn't he? Well, I don't... He's well, I think, I think the Green... Would you have carried on with the Green policy? 
Uh, no, because no, I, I didn't wouldn't, like it anyway. I think the problem is it, just the very fact you put it out there. It's, it's clickbait. It's a, it's a, it, it's a concept. That was ne he's never going to be able to do that. Where, where does he think in a million years he's going to get that money for? And it just, it's just ridiculous. I, I think it's pointless. I don't think you should have said it. And that's, but that's politics. Well, we're going to have to print. Yeah, I mean, we, we disagree entirely on this. I think there is enough money to f uh, fund it. I think we stand on either ends of this. If they wanted to fund it, they could. Okay. If they wanted to, we're, they could. They we're, chose by not to. By printing money. Dave in Staffordshire, hi. Hi, ah, good morning, Jeremy. We've had some, uh, frankly, amazing calls today, so you're, on to you. Well, I'll give you a little insight. A, a very close friend of mine is a, a, a Labour MP. And um, Paul actually said, and I'm not going to give his full Paul. name, Paul actually said that, <laughs> we'll that uh, he Stafford was... Um, <laughs> Don't think we have yeah, to call Inspector yeah, Walker. Okay. your MP, mystery. Dave. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was. Okay. Uh, a spy, but, Dave. Uh, We've kind Dave, of narrowed it down. <laughs> Come on, Dave. Yeah, talk to yeah. Come on, Dave. Can't uh, keep a secret, can you, Dave? That, Paul. <laughs> he actually said that uh, he was one of the most decent uh, blokes in politics. Oh. That's and he actually said that he, he listens and he's willing to change his mind if it doesn't... If it doesn't uh, you, uh, listen, really no one's attacking his, his decency here, but, but and obviously they don't get the attention that Sunak and co get because they've been in government and they've, they've taken a pasting. It's just that when you get to, at some point, Dave, you get a, a level of U-turn that you think this is now worth mentioning. Well, uh, it's called democracy. You say it's u and I call it democracy. And, and basically, the £28 billion for the, the green policies, he hasn't said he's not going to go ahead with it, as far as I understand. If he finds the money down the back of the sofa, well, he will do it, yeah. Is it Paul yeah, Farrelly, right. well, Dave? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Internet, you Thank you, my friend. Yeah. That's so good. Uh, <laughs> that's amazing. It wasn't as if it Kept was... Kept him on the line you know, just for that, Jeremy. Long, that's yeah. very, that's very out of part. Thank you for We'll be asking you, what a show we've got today. If we need to scrap trigger warnings in books, films and shows, after the break, should cycle lanes be given priority?